Space Jam, a new legacy is the sequel to the 1996 film Space Jam. It's finally coming out, not with Michael Jordan this time. This time it's LeBron James. He's trying to help teach his son how to play basketball, but it turns out that his son, Dom, doesn't really care about basketball. He only cares about video games. But since LeBron doesn't really know much about video games, doesn't really have a lot of respect for them, he has no idea how to connect with his son. But after a Warner Brothers pitch meeting gone wrong, they both get abducted by the evil Warner Brothers algorithm, Algae Rhythm, played by Dom. Don Cheadle and they get sent into the server verse and in order for LeBron James to actually get him and his son safely out of there he has to beat Algae Rhythm in a game of basketball and he gets sent down to a reject world which is Toon World and that's where he has to find all of the tunes, reassemble the Toon Squad and beat Don Cheadle at basketball. I'm not a fan of the first Space Jam movie like even as a kid there was a part of me that was like it's alright but eh, it's not really my favorite movie of all time, uh, and it certainly isn't now, you know, it definitely hasn't aged well. As a kid, I honestly had more of a fondness for Looney Tunes back in action. That was the kind of Looney Tunes movie uh, mixed in with live action elements that I actually enjoyed. I haven't seen that movie since, like, at least uh, 20... 14, I want to say. It's been a long time, but you know, I always kind of hold that movie in a high regard over Space Jam. I think I, j I just have more of a nostalgia for that movie than the stupid basketball one. <laughs> but when the first trailer for this came out, I was kind of like, it looks kind of cool, you know? Like, it's got like some cool visual effects uh, for the actual basketball game. It looks like a really cool layout for it. You know, it's going to be cool to see 2D animation uh, again on the big screen. You know, it looks really great. The thing that always had me worried about this movie, though, wasn't necessarily the amount of characters that were going to be in it, like in that trailer when they showed the long shot of all of the famous Warner Brothers IPs running down a hill. A lot of people were like, oh my god, they're just doing Ready Player One again. They're just trying to celebrate themselves, yada yada yada. That wasn't really the thing I was the most concerned about. The thing I was most concerned about was like some of the humor. Like in the second trailer they released, there was a lot of, you know, jokes that they were dropping where I was like, ugh kind of a groaner, so that was my biggest worry going into this. I know a lot of people's critiques have simply just kind of been, this movie is just a commercial, you know, there's a lot of, you know, references to Warner Brothers Media, a lot of the content that they own, a lot of stuff that you can find on HBO Max, so a lot of people are looking at this as a cynical, soulless kind of commercial movie, and as an adult, yeah, you can watch this movie and totally analyze it and pick out every single corporate decision made, even the idea to be kind of uh, meta and kind of self-referential, you know, that that's definitely a move on their part to try to make the movie a little more appealing. But I feel like that's just because we're adults that uh, have seen a lot of movies before and recognize corporate decisions when we see them. Kids that'll watch this movie probably aren't going to notice a whole lot, you know, especially because they warp in a lot of this, you know, referencing other movie stuff into the actual plot of this film. You know, it's not like they're just throwing stuff in like, hey, we want to sell something, so let's randomly put something in. Like, it's worked into the plot, so it's kind of hard for me to be like, you know, uh, cynical, oh my gosh, they're just trying to be like super ultra corporate overlords when it's the plot of the movie, you know, this is the entire premise of this movie. Especially when they also couple it with the fact that mostly this movie is about LeBron trying to uh, find and save his son, but also connect with him, you know, and actually bond on a more emotional level as opposed to, I want to teach him how to play basketball. And I actually did really like that aspect of the story, you know, LeBron, I'm just going to get it out of the way, he's not the best actor, I'm sorry to say, he was really funny in Trainwreck, he, he was pretty funny in that movie. And in parts where he's animated and they're animating to his voice, it can kind of help. But mostly, yeah, I mean, he's not hes not a good actor. He's not a trained actor, obviously. Um, but there's still some moments where he's able to sell it, mostly when he's in scenes with his son. Uh, the actor playing his son, I'm not sure who it is, but he does a really great job in this movie. So although it's in the middle of a movie that essentially is kind of made to sell stuff, there is still at least some form of an attempt at a beating heart of a story. And also, there's no, like, like direct reference to, like, HBO Max or anything like that. You know, it's a lot of, like, hey, we're jumping into movies, and once again, if you, as the adult, are analyzing it, you're like, okay, they picked this movie because this is a part of HBO Max, or this is maybe going to have another installment a couple months from now, so put it in this, you know. You can definitely, as an adult, analyze everything and just pinpoint why they made certain decisions, but no kid is probably going to do that unless they're like a super, super, super smart kid, but kids are dumb! <laughs> 
And also, I doubt any kid who went to go see this in a theater and maybe doesn't already have HBO Max is gonna walk out of it and go, Hey mom, you know what we need to get now? HBO Max. That movie really sold me on it. Especially since a lot of the stuff they reference they can't watch. You know, a lot of the stuff they have is rated R. <laughs> or Casablanca, which they'll find incredibly boring. Now don't get me wrong, this movie definitely does have its issues and I am going to address them right now, but I just wanted to get it out of the way. I'm not going to be one of those critics that's just talking about my life is ruined because I just saw a complete commercial of a film. Oh my gosh, it's so corporate. You know, like I don't want to say like they're intentionally trying to be clickbaity, but it definitely feels like a clickbaity thing to do to act like this is one of the worst movies you've ever seen just because commercialism. <laughs> I've already addressed LeBron James's acting in this movie, but I would say another one of the uh, weaker parts of this movie is unfortunately some of the jokes that they do sprinkle in, and it's a lot of like the times when they try to go a little too modern and try to be you know, hip with the kids, and it comes across really cringy, like the notorious P.I.G. scene, I wanted to peel off the skin on my face, I did not want to be in that theater next to kids in the theater watching notorious P.I.G., it was embarrassing. This movie at least does have mostly, I would say, like a solid sense of humor to it, the Looney Tunes have, you know, good gags going on, it's really great to see them just in anything, you know what I mean, with like polished professional uh, movie budget animation, it's, you know, it looks fantastic. Even though eventually they turn into 3D models of themselves, I was so happy to just see 2D animation on a big screen for like a long extended period of time. Even worlds where they could have definitely at least tried to do more live action stuff, occasionally they will just be like, eh, let's make it animated, and it looks spectacular. All of the voice acting, like, you know, Jeff Bergman, who's played Bugs before, Eric Bauza doing Daffy and a bunch of other characters, and even Zendaya as Lola Bunny, even though there is a bit of a, I'll put in a screenshot here, a little bit of a snafu as far as, like, the original voice actress coming back, but then immediately replaced for seemingly no reason. I don't know if this is true or false or not, I'm just gonna leave that there, because there is a part of that that feels very corporate icky, um, but I don't have full facts, so I can't really discuss at length about it, but even she does a solid job as Lola, everyone does a good job voicing these characters, uh, you know, it's, it's great to see them. If anything, seeing them look so good and act as well as they do, it made me disappointed that this movie wasn't focused more on them as characters, and this movie definitely makes more of an attempt to, uh, flesh them out a bit more as, like, actual characters going through character arcs compared to the first Space Jam, which is not they got nothing. Michael Jordan doesn't even have a character arc in that, you know? Like, this is definitely, don't get me wrong, this is better in every single way uh, to the original Space Jam, uh, in my humble opinion. I, I prefer this movie immensely. But even then, when they try to improve stuff, I couldn't help but feel like the treatment of the tunes as actual characters was a little weak, and they missed out on some opportunities. Like when LeBron actually gets to Toon World, it's just Bugs. Bugs is the only one there, and you can tell he's kind of going through something, and it's, you know, it's played up for comedy, but I was really thinking, like, man, you could really, like, even though this is just kind of a joke, and we're gonna move on, and the heart of the movie is LeBron and his son, who wants to make a video game, um, I, I really would like to see just the, the tunes have character arcs and actually, like, you know, I, I don't know, I just want to see those characters challenged in a way that we haven't really seen before, and I thought there's parts of this movie where they could have chased that, and they didn't. They went with a better direction than what they did with the original Space Jam with those characters, but still, it just wasn't quite there yet. It, it wasn't enough for me. But you know who was awesome in this movie? And I was surprised that they were as awesome as they were. Don Cheadle as Algy Rhythm is honestly kind of incredible. Um, because when, when it first opened up, I was like, okay, it's like a AI, got it. Why does it look like Don Cheadle? Like in a movie where they reference so many things, surely Don Cheadle must be in some Warner Brothers movie. Is no one going to mention that it looks exactly like Don Cheadle? Uh, so, you know, but that was nitpicking I was able to pull out of it because He's just so goddamn entertaining as this villain. He gets so wacky and loony. And it was it was kind of amazing, actually. There's a moment where they pull, like, a Will Smith in Spies in Disguise where there's a scene in that movie where he's about to, like, drop to the ground as this pigeon and he just says, fuck. But they censor it. They put a bleep in a kid's movie. And he, there's a moment where he's doing that, too. He's berating his team. And he just, like, starts swearing and there's just a big, long blur. It's like, holy shit. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Don Cheeto was really kind of owning this role for the for the better. You know, he, he did a really fun job. Every time he was on screen, I wanted more of him. He was absolutely delightful. And also, like, as far as, like, 
actually getting LeBron to play basketball, what the stakes are, like what does this game actually mean, I found it way more interesting compared to that first Space Jam movie. Like, yeah, okay, I, I, I really do like this idea of like a rogue AI algorithm that has just gone nuts, you know, and, and trying to get revenge against someone rejecting their pitch. Like, that actually sounds kind of funny and, and really interesting at the same time, you know, especially when you're trying to orchestrate a Space Jam movie, you know, there's just aspects of this plot that I actually really did enjoy compared to the first Space Jam, which was evil aliens uh, want an amusement park, they want to get the Looney Tunes to be entertaining for them, um, but the Looney Tunes are like, we'll play basketball, and then they're like, we need Michael Jordan, and then Michael Jordan's like, I guess I'll help even though I don't know you or have any emotional attachment to what's going on. You know, it's, you know, yeah, bad first movie. This is better. As far as any other issues I had with it, you know, there's like some iffy VFX kind of work every once in a while. It's, it's mostly like that Pete character, like this floating thing that surrounds Don Cheadle, and there's, it's like his assistant or something like that just looked visually kind of ugly to me. And like compared to everything else that looks so good and, and looks so specific, having this like weird, not really pre-rendered, like, Max Steel-looking thing come up, like, I don't know. I just didn't really like the visual of the character. De design is probably okay, just the visual of it, the actual execution of putting it on screen. And also, like, watching LeBron's kid make this game, he's got a, you know, you know, there's aspects, and I know it's a movie, and I know he's LeBron's kid, you know, movie logic is he's rich, he can get anything, but... I don't know, just some of the tech he has to make this game with the most high-level graphics uh, for the time, like, it was a little, it was a little hokey to me, I couldn't help but pull myself out of, the, out of the movie just because I was thinking of that, you know, like, I get he's LeBron's kid and he can probably make a game that looks this great because money, but wouldn't it be better if it was, like, a really, like, shitty, still-in-development game that kind of crashes and he's like, fuck, um, and then Don Cheadle's like, Man, we can fix that little glitch, but man, what if I, like, you know, fucking improve it and, like, modernize it to the max, you know? I feel like that would have been better than just, he already has, like, an amazing game in his, in his room, and his only problem is one glitch. But while watching the movie, I was having a pretty solid time with it, like, I was, like, riding at a pretty fair B-, minus. um, like, it, despite all its issues, I still was having fun with a lot of the gags, the basketball gameplay was actually a ton of fun and visually really well executed, like, they actually make it make sense why there's no fucking rules. Like, in the first movie, they're constantly like, hey, you're breaking the rules and stuff like that, but then they just do wacky Looney Tune stuff on the court, which is breaking rules, and it's like, what the fuck are you doing? In this they're actually like, hey, there's no rules. It makes sense why they're able to do a lot of the stuff that they do. It's like, okay, they 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 tried to make it better. Thank God. It's backed by a really fun, energetic score, and you know, having fun, energetic characters that don't make you feel pain seeing them because they're being butchered on screen. It's like, no, they, they they've captured the feel of these guys really well, and there's a lot of heart here. Um, but then the ending happened, and it's not a bad idea for an ending, but I just felt like, you know, considering the high emotion they were trying to go for, rushing through some explanations, uh, and, like, aftermaths of certain things was just kind of... I, I wish they didn't do that so much, because this is something that people would be talking about, you know what I mean? But no one really is? I don't know, I don't, I don't know. It was kind of a weak ending for me. Uh, for what could have been really good, especially, once again, going back to if they treated the tunes more as, like, characters, main characters, as opposed to supporting LeBron, then it could have been something really special. So look, it's Space Jam. It's a Space Jam movie, but one that is better than the first movie, at least for me. It, it, you know, this movie won't have, like, the nostalgia that you have for the first Space Jam if you love it, but, you know, I feel like it objectively does stuff that is better than the first Space Jam movie, so to walk out of it going like this is like like completely worse than the first movie or like completely terrible, like I, I'm sorry, I just can't really buy into that at all, obviously, you know, your opinion is your opinion and that's totally fine, but for a lot of it I was kind of enjoying myself, a lot of it is just the respect I have for the animation, you know, a lot of the CG work they were doing, a lot of the ways they were actually taking these movie clips and incorporating the characters in, I thought was really well done for a lot of it. Not every joke is a winner, but a lot of it was kind of getting me to chuckle. There's a cameo that lasts 10 seconds. I couldn't believe that these characters were there, but it was, it was honestly kind of amazing. I was surprised at how many kids also recognized them, too. I was like, really, you guys, you watch this? Or, 
like maybe you're not supposed to watch it, but you have been watching it. What it, what's the deal here? Come to think of it, there was a kid also like when they showed footage of Mad Max Fury Road, they were like, "Look, it's Mad Max Fury Road." Like, you know? Like you know what that is? Oh my god. So, you know, the kids are probably smarter than I give them credit for, but still dumb. I'm going to give Space Jam a new legacy a C+. It's a fine enough movie for kids. They'll probably get a really good kick out of it, especially if they're a fan of the Looney Tunes characters already. You know, it's 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 fun enough for kids, you know? I don't think showing them this is going to ruin their minds or anything like that. Their minds are already ruined. There's five-year-olds with, like, fucking cell phones now. It's it's embarrassing. What are we doing? As for the adults, though, you know, they might get a kick out of it just because, hey, Looney Tunes, you know, they do they do have some of their classic gags, you know, um, but you will probably notice a lot of faults along the way if you're somebody like me, uh, and you, pr you might notice a lot of the corporate decision-making. But at the end of the day... It's it's Space Jam. It's for the kids, man. Like I don't I don't know what you want me to say. But if you've seen Space Jam a new legacy, leave in the comments below what you thought of it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.